snap out of it. Get up already, lying down for a mere fever. Don't be such a baby. Right now, my temperature is at 106 degrees. I can barely move. And even though it's summer, I'm freezing and can't stop shivering. This isn't just a regular fever. I've said it over and over. I need to go to the hospital. But this woman in front of me dismisses me. It's just in your head, she says. A shame to want a hospital for such a small thing. Close by, my month-old baby girl is crying. I'm sorry, sweetie, you must be starving. Mommy just can't muster the strength right now. As my world gets hazy, I hear a voice. My name's Aura. I'm a 28-year-old stay-at-home mom from rural Texas. I was drawn to the city lights and ended up in Boston for college in Nicieli. Some people teased me for my southern drawl, but others found it endearing. I was fortunate to make many friends here. Now, my southern accent is almost gone, and people are often surprised to find out where I originally come from. After graduating, I got a job at a local firm in Boston as a receptionist. That's where I bumped into Robert, who worked for a client. He eventually became my husband. Robert's job at an international company often takes him overseas. We didn't get to see each other much, but after waiting for three years, he popped the question one Christmas. Our wedding was a joyful occasion with college friends, colleagues, and family. Everyone was there, celebrating our love. With tears streaming down, my mom held me close. You deserve all the happiness, she said. Life felt perfect until I moved in with that shovel. Robert grew up as an only child, living with his folks. They were genuinely warm and welcoming when we first met, making me believe they were genuinely kind-hearted. The age gap between Robert's parents is more than a decade. His mom had him when she was just a teenager. She's nearing her 50s now, but looks so youthful. It's so lovely to have Aura with us, right, honey? She'd often chime in. Absolutely. If you ever face any trouble, just let us know, they'd assure. I'm so glad for their understanding. I've heard about those classic mother-in-law versus father-in-law tales, but with this mother-in-law, I think I'll be okay. I felt at ease the first time. Something felt off right after we got married. During a work break, I received a call from my mother-in-law. Picking it up, I heard, so when is Aura moving over, excuse me? I mean, aren't the two of you staying in the room you originally lived in? It's pretty cramped, like a dog's kennel, isn't it? I just thought maybe you'd be moving here. Her voice was cheerful as always, but I definitely sensed malice in her words. Robert had moved into my place after our marriage because our workplaces were nearby, and I was attached to that space. Did she just call my house a dog's kennel? I'll discuss it with Robert, I said before hanging up. That night, I told Robert about the call. He felt the same way I did and immediately called mother-in-law. Hey mom, I talked to Aura and we're not planning on living with you. Yep, bye. What did mother-in-law say? She sounded a bit disappointed, but she got it. I sighed in relief. Late that night, I got a single message from mother-in-law saying, that's too bad. I apologized the next morning, but there was no reply. Time passed and I discovered I was pregnant. Both our families were thrilled, but it seemed I had a severe morning sickness and spent most of my day in the restroom. I ran out of paid leave and had to quit my job. Feeling guilty after a while, Although I still felt some nausea, I could manage some household chores. I always looked forward to the prenatal checkups, watching our little one grow. Whenever Robert could take a day off, he'd accompany me. If he couldn't, mother-in-law, who lived in the same city, would drive me. It's exciting. I wonder if we could find out the baby's gender soon, an upbeat mother-in-law remarked. Actually, the doctor mentioned we might know today. But as long as the baby is healthy... I tried to reply when she interjected. It's definitely a boy. We need an heir. I could only respond with a nervous laugh. At a subsequent checkup, we learned our baby was a girl. I hesitated but informed mother-in-law. She paused for a moment but said, No matter the gender, it's still my grandchild, relieving my anxiety. When I told Robert he was overjoyed, he sent tons of photos of cute clothes and toys. Even during work hours, I can't wait to meet you. Please be born healthy. I hoped every day. As the pregnancy progressed into the later stages, the baby's movements became more pronounced, starting my mornings with a hello and ending my nights with a good night. I constantly chatted with my baby, 
Feeling those little kicks was absolutely heartwarming. One day, amidst this routine, I found myself wondering when was the last time I felt the baby move. Today? Even though I had just entered the final stretch of my pregnancy, our baby was a bit smaller than average. The doctor had mentioned that it would be best if the baby arrived around the expected due date. Growing anxious, I quickly called our local maternity clinic and rushed there by taxi. I also informed my husband, who assured me he'd be there as soon as possible. Upon arrival at the clinic, they immediately hooked me up to a monitor and noticed that our baby's heartbeat was weak. Trying to keep me calm, a nurse gently said, It's okay. Your baby just seems eager to meet you, that's all. After a short consultation among the doctors, it was decided that an emergency C-section was necessary. By that time, my husband had already arrived, had been briefed, and was filling out the necessary paperwork. An hour later, I gave birth to a 25 LB baby girl. That night, sleep eluded me due to the pain. Of course, it hurt. They had cut into my belly to prevent blood clots. I had to shift my body every few hours, but every movement brought sharp pain. I received messages from my husband, words of gratitude accompanied by photos of our baby. It seemed he had informed our parents, who were overjoyed with the news. So, Aura, there's something I need to discuss with you. Hearing my husband's words that followed made my heart race with anxiety. A week later, on the day of my discharge, my husband settled the bill while I waited in the lounge. Aura, looking forward to our journey from today, greeted my mother-in-law. We named our daughter Lily, born in a season of beautiful blossoms, hence Lily. Some might say it's a simple choice, but my husband and I loved it. Post-delivery, I wasn't feeling great, so I had declined all visitors. This was the first time I was meeting my in-laws after the birth. Lily, meet your grandpa, such a cutie, said my father-in-law. May I hold her? Lifting her effortlessly, it was clear he was already smitten. Well, come on, hold her too. Thank you so much, Aura, he beckoned to my mother-in-law, but she declined without even a touch. Hmm, that's odd. Isn't she excited about her own granddaughter? Something's off about her, I thought, and there was a reason for my suspicion. During my hospital stay, I had plenty of conversations with the nurses and midwives. They'd check on my health and ask if there were any postpartum concerns, the usual stuff. After we finished talking, the nurse hesitated before saying, By the way, was the woman with Aura during the checkup your real mother? No, she's my husband's mother, I said. I see. I wasn't sure whether to tell you this, but... What the nurse told me next sent shivers down my spine. If anything happens, please contact me immediately. With that advice, I was discharged. I honestly didn't want to get involved. Either way, instead of heading to our house, the car was heading to my in-laws. We're here? From today, this will be your home, mother-in-law said with a wicked smile on her face. Now, you might be wondering how this situation came to be. It all starts with why I didn't go back to my parents' home to give birth. It's not that I didn't want to. I simply couldn't. My parents married late in life and had difficulty conceiving. I was born when they were in their 40s, their only child. To add to that, my grandmother, with whom we lived, is elderly, and her dementia has been progressing. My parents are fully occupied taking care of her, so they're not in a position to take me in. Knowing all this, I had no intentions of going back home to give birth. Some of my friends chose to raise their kids at their own pace without returning to their parents. I felt that approach suited me better. My husband applied for parental leave, but due to staff shortages at his job, it seemed unlikely. However, after I gave birth, I wasn't feeling well. Worried, my husband consulted his parents and it was decided we'd live with them for a while. I had reservations, but once we started living together, things went smoothly. My husband came home early to help, and my in-laws were very supportive. Mother-in-law even took care of most of the household chores, allowing me to focus on taking care of Lily. I even thought maybe we should have moved in earlier. Especially father-in-law, he was a pro at changing diapers, preparing formula, and giving baths. Father-in-law, you're amazing. I can't thank you enough. However, every time I praised him, mother-in-law seemed displeased. As the one-month mark approached, I began to recover, and although I still felt tired, I started helping out with household chores. Around that time, my husband had to go on a business trip abroad. This time, he'd be away for about a month. If anything happens, 
Let me know immediately. I'll come flying back. It's okay, father-in-law, and the rest are here. With that, my husband set off for foreign lands. While my husband was away, I felt uneasy. But my in-laws insisted that I should treat their home as mine and ask for anything I needed. And true to their word, they were genuinely helpful. However, my mother-in-law did help with household chores, but she seemed disinterested in my daughter, hardly interacting with her at all. But at least father-in-law is here, so it should be okay, right? Just as I thought that, something unexpected happened. I'll be going now. Turns out, certainly. Below is your transcript with punctuation, stops, emotions, and spelling mistakes corrected. Father-in-law's mother wasn't feeling well, so to take care of her, father-in-law had to leave for about a week. Mother-in-law apparently doesn't get along with father-in-law's parents and hasn't met them in a long time, even during events like New Year's. Only father-in-law and his dad would go. By this time, my husband was also only a week away from returning from his business trip. I thought, it's just a week, it should be all right. But my memories of the next few days are a blur. From the next day, mother-in-law's true colors shone. How long are you going to sleep? Get up now. Woken up by her sudden shout, I opened my eyes to see mother-in-law towering over me with an intimidating look. What? Lazing around in someone else's house? There's so much to do. I wanted to boss you around but couldn't with your husband here. It was so stressful. Her sudden change was shocking. It was as if she was a completely different person. Feeling threatened, I reached out for my phone, but in an unexpected move, mother-in-law swiftly grabbed it from me. This is why you're going downhill, she remarked, smashing my phone on the ground. What are you doing? I picked it up immediately, but the screen was shattered and it was unresponsive. You're always on this, neglecting your parenting duties. You're a failure as a mother. While mother-in-law said that it wasn't true. Sure, I used my phone when my daughter was asleep, whether sending cute photos of our daughter to my husband on his business trip or looking up parenting tips about things like the right amount of milk or when babies typically develop neck control. But faced with the aggressive mother-in-law, all I could muster was, I'm sorry. The following days were a nightmare. Mother-in-law stopped doing any chores and worked me to the bone all day long. Even while taking care of my daughter, I had no time to rest. My chest hurts again. I had been feeling this pain for some time. There was a lump when I touched it, and it felt hot. I couldn't discuss it with father-in-law, and mother-in-law brushed off my concerns multiple times, saying, it's all in your head. You're just overthinking. Mother-in-law, my chest really hurts. Can you take me to the hospital? You again with this, running to the hospital for something minor? Are you out of your mind? But I, I feel feverish. Can I at least lie down? Pretending to be sick, have some shame, not allowed to rest. I juggled housework and childcare while feeling dizzy. When I took a moment to check my temperature, the thermometer read 102 degrees. I had no way to call for help. Mother-in-law watched my every move and I couldn't even step outside. At this rate, I would collapse both mentally and physically. I was at my limit. The next morning, my temperature shot up to 106 degrees half. Mother-in-law, I have a fever of 106 degrees. Can you please take care of Lily? What? No way. I don't even want to touch a child like that. What's with that C-section anyway? Can't you have a child normally? I couldn't believe my ears. She really doesn't think of my daughter as her grandchild. Get up now. What's this fuss over a mere fever? Stop being so needy. Lily was crying, perhaps out of hunger. Mother-in-law continued to berate me, ignoring my daughter's distress. Then it happened. What the hell are you doing? This is outrageous. I heard a man's angry voice. Mother-in-law looked panicked, saying, What? Why are you here? Hearing that voice, whether from relief or exhaustion, I pass it out. When I woke up, I found myself in a hospital bed. Oh, thank goodness, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm truly sorry. My husband was there, tears streaming down his face as he looked at me. In my husband's arms, I could see Lily sleeping soundly. From what I was told, it seemed I had developed mastitis. They administered antibiotics and my fever had subsided. I felt much better. Curiously, I asked my husband, why are you here? What about your business trip? You stopped communicating all of a sudden, and my mom just kept saying everything was fine. 
Also, the maternity clinic contacted me. They were concerned when you didn't show up for your checkup and couldn't get in touch. Apparently, when I didn't show up for my checkup, the clinic became suspicious. They reached out to my husband instead of me. Although my husband was unreachable overseas, Shirt he had informed them of his workplace, so they contacted him through his company. Realizing the gravity of the situation, he spoke with his supervisor and urgently returned to the States. About my mom, he said. She claims she wasn't in her right mind because of the heat, but I can't accept that. It's okay, I'll see her. Thus, after being discharged, a meeting was arranged. When we arrived at my in-laws, my father-in-law had returned and exclaimed, I'm truly sorry for everything. You apologize, too. Mother-in-law sat meekly but glared at me. I'm sorry, but I couldn't stand it. As soon as you were away, Aura, you just left everything to others. It made me want to be a little mean, she began. And with that, she burst into childish tears. What are you even saying, you liar? You're talking about yourself. I will never forgive you. Everyone looked at mother-in-law with cold eyes. Perhaps realizing her ridiculousness, she looked up. Are we done with the theatrics? I stood up and retrieved cameras I had secretly installed around the house. I played back the footage in front of everyone. Of course, the video showed mother-in-law berating me and treating me like a servant. The cruel words she spoke to my daughter were also clearly captured. What is this? This is an invasion of privacy. I'll sue you. Shut up. You've done something unthinkable. No, you've got it all wrong. I think the heat messed with my head. Mother-in-law rambled on with incomprehensible words. Has mother-in-law's mind always been like this? You barely took care of your own children, yet you have the audacity to criticize my parenting. The truth is, before father-in-law left the house, he had confided something to me. Mother-in-law, having had a child at a young age, still had a strong desire to enjoy her youth. She would neglect Robert, leaving most of the child care to father-in-law and his parents. No wonder father-in-law was so good at parenting. That's why father-in-law's parents had such a strong dislike for mother-in-law. Though divorce crossed his mind, he felt responsible for putting such a young mother-in-law into the role of a mother and couldn't bring himself to take that step. By the time Robert was old enough to understand things, mother-in-law began to show a little more care. So, father-in-law felt relieved. However, he had noticed mother-in-law's lack of interest in their son, suspecting the worst. And after consulting with me, he said, the camera, before leaving. The agreement was that if anything suspicious occurred, he would be informed immediately. But he never expected to lose contact on the very first day. When mother-in-law realized father-in-law was involved, her earlier bravado vanished, her face turned pale. I later learned he had told her that if she messed up again, he'd consider divorce. You don't really care for Lily either, do you? When I asked that, she stuttered. No, that's not true. She's my precious granddaughter, liar. Deciding to spill the beans, I told her about what I had learned from the nurse at the maternity clinic. From the time Lily's gender was confirmed, mother-in-law had been calling the clinic repeatedly. Her requests were outrageous, asking things like, Is there any chance we could still have a boy? Apparently, they didn't tell me to avoid causing me stress. Eventually, the head doctor took charge and the call stopped. Hearing this, I felt nothing but disdain and wondered how she could treat human life so lightly. Both my husband and father-in-law felt the same. Get out! Leave now! But girls, they're just so hard-headed and defiant. Just like Aura, boys are easier, they listen when asked. She rambled on incoherently. Robert, you're on my side, right? Suddenly, Robert, who had been silent until now, stood up. He grabbed his mother's arm and without hesitation, dragged her out the door. Are you serious? After what you've done to my precious Lily and Lily, I don't even see you as my mother anymore. Stay out of our lives. His mother looked shocked. She turned to me, pleading, Aura, I'm sorry, I apologize. Please convince him and Lily for me. But my mind was made up. I never want to see your face again. I tossed her purse to her and locked the door. She caused a scene for a bit, but when our neighbors started coming out to see what was happening, she, perhaps out of embarrassment, hurried away. What happened after? My in-laws went through several discussions with their lawyers. She tried to reconcile many times, but his feelings had completely cooled off. In the end, she reluctantly agreed to the divorce. Thanks to the property settlement from him, 
She won't struggle financially for a while, but she's still in her late 40s. Sooner or later, she'll have to work. I'm not sure if she, who's never worked a day in her life, will manage, but she should face some hardships. As for us, Robert's company opened a new branch in Texas, 